I'm Sujata Srinivasan. I'm a professor in mechanical engineering at IIT Madras and I run two centers here. Uh, one is R2D2, the TTK Center for Rehabilitation Research and Device Development. And last year we inaugurated this, uh, uh, the National Center for Assistive Health uh, Technologies at the research park, IIT Madras Research Park, which is an initiative of ICMR. So ICMR has uh, uh, established these national centers for assistive health technologies uh, in four places. Uh, IIT Madras is one of them and we focus on locomotor uh, disability. There's also one at IIT Delhi, which focuses on visual impairment. There is one at Ames Delhi and one in the National Institute of Speech and Hearing at Trivandrum. Uh, so all of them focus on different disabilities at uh, NCAT IIT Madras, we focus on locomotor disability. So at R2D2, which is about uh, nine years old, we've been developing assistive technologies for persons with locomotor disability. So that is our focus. And our focus is not just developing prototypes, but uh, we've managed to take five of these devices to the market with industry partners as well as our own startup. We continue to develop uh, more devices there, but we realized after a point that, you know, just developing assistive technologies is not enough. Uh, there are lots of other challenges in terms of awareness that need to be addressed. Uh, and that's how we created NCAT, the National Center uh, here, as an awareness zone, as uh, a place for people to come and experience uh, disability and ability to look at various devices uh, that are uh, available uh, for locomotor uh, disability and also you know conduct dissemination programs uh, our dissemination and outreach programs uh, to educate people about uh, disability about uh, the clinical aspects of disability as well as uh, how assistive technologies can help improve uh, lives uh, with me here is uh, Justin J. Sudas. Uh, he heads operations at uh, R2D2 uh, and has uh, been instrumental in uh, helping us, uh, you know, uh, do the things uh, that we do. Uh, Justin, over to you. Uh, India alone could be home uh, for about 90 to 130 million people with disabilities. Uh, I think there is a divide uh, between ability and disability and technology could be one of the biggest enablers that bridges this gap. Uh, with the right technology, we can start seeing more people in the community participate in the community. We operate in a model called GRID model, where G stands for grants, R for research, I for industry or partner onboarding, and D for dissemination. Uh, and IIT typically, IIT Madras, what R2D2 does is, it's a grant multiplier. While we get the grants, financial stuff, uh, there are other resources that come together to create this technology and take it to the people in the right manner. Uh, for example, uh, for a pair of spectacles, we have a prescription that needs to be done. But for wheelchairs, we don't need prescriptions. That needs to change. So some of the things that we do is not just device development, designing great devices, but we also have teams that actually goes and reaches out uh, to the clinical uh, professionals, rehabilitation professionals, users, policy makers to let them know that uh, things need to change, the narratives need to change. Uh, essentially, at the end of it, uh, we are simply through technology and through dissemination we want to ensure that the quality of life of persons with disability is way better than what it is right. So we realized early on that, you know, having nice prototypes in the lab is not enough. If we really want to make an impact, we have to take our devices to the market. And so we have to work with industry partners to do that. Our first device was the Arise uh, standing wheelchair, which is a manually operated uh, uh, wheel, uh, wheelchair that helps the user to pull themselves up to the standing position while sitting in the wheelchair. It's a completely manually operated device and it's also good for like, you know, traversing, uh, um, say, a two kilometer distance, even in rural areas. It was primarily targeted at uh, the rural population. Then uh, we also have uh, an active wheelchair called Neofly. Uh, which is uh, very ergonomically designed. It's customized to the user. It has a lot of adjustments that help the user make the most of a manual wheelchair. Uh, has very good uh, propulsion. 
This is a wheelchair made by Neo Motion. Uh, this is called Neo Fly and this is called Neo Light. Uh, there are subtle, uh, subtle differences in the customization. You can see the tire is different. This is a, a more of a uh, regular use tire and this is an off-road tire. People can swap it and you can uh, find a lot of adjustments available in the wheelchair. The front wheels can be changed, uh, the brakes can be changed, uh, the height can be changed, the angle can be changed, the cushions can be changed, even the color can be changed based on the personality of the person. So giving all these options is really important for the person to own the device and then become confident in moving outdoors and participating. And the speciality about this version is it's very light in weight. So it's half the weight of these regular devices and this makes it easier for people to pick up the wheelchairs and place in the car or auto and become even more independent. With it, you can attach a device called the Neo Bolt, which is a motorized uh, device that converts the Neo Fly into a roadworthy vehicle. So with that, you have seamless indoor-outdoor mobility. A person can, uh, you know, be outdoors with a Neofly and Neobolt, come back, and when they want to go indoors, they just detach uh, the Neobolt, lock it, and go indoors. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, that we commercialized through our own startup, Neomotion. Uh, and then recently, we also uh, created a motorized version of the standing wheelchair because we realized that not everybody can operate the manual version, even though it takes very little effort. Uh, but for uh, people with higher levels of, say, spinal cord injury, they may not have the hand uh, function uh, and arm strength to operate the manual device. Uh, and so we came up with a motorized version, and that is also being commercialized by Neomotion. That's called Neostand. And with a push of a button, the user can go from uh, sitting to standing. And it's also good from a therapeutic uh, standpoint because standing can be performed gradually. It can stop at intermediate positions. It can even move, you know, the, as long as the person can reach the push rims, they can also move around in the semi-standing position, which can be very advantageous if you're doing chores around the home. You don't have to sit and stand each time. So that uh, was the, uh, uh, the, that was one more device. Then uh, in prosthetics, uh, we designed a polycentric knee, which is, uh, you know, India's first indigenous uh, design uh, of a polycentric knee, uh, specifically meant for walking on uneven terrain, because that's what we encounter every day. So the geometry of the knee is optimized in such a way that the user has better control when walking with their artificial leg using this knee. So these are two examples of prosthetic knee joints. Uh, this is the one which is commonly available for uh, most of the people. This is a single axis knee joint. You can see uh, the knee just wobbles uh, and when a person is walking, it may be very difficult to control the movement and it will look awkward. It may not be very close to your natural pattern of walking. So this is called a polycentric knee joint. You can see it's not wobbling like the previous one, it's not a hinge like the previous one, but this is a polycentric joint. So the movement is very smooth and the person can even do activities like squatting down to the floor and it's very useful for people in India. The National Center for Assistive Health Technologies at IIT Madras uh, is essentially an experience center uh, for users primarily. So users can call the center their own. They can come here and experience the potential of assistive technologies, what it can do to uh, their life. 90% uh, of the wheelchairs that are sold in India or hospital grade wheelchairs, not meant for community use. Uh, similarly, 60% of prosthetic researchers say some researchers that are rejected by uh, people with amputation because it's not made primarily for them or it's not customizable or different challenges there. So here they can come, look at different compar uh, comparing uh, technologies, be it for standing or for mobility or, you know, uh, mobility could be through wheelchair or prosthetics or orthotics, uh, even stair climbing chairs so and sports technologies as well. So this place displays those technology, technologies and people can compare and choose what's appropriate for them. But not just that, uh, for policy makers, this is kind of, uh, you know, an eye-opening uh, center where they come and see uh, what are the different architectural barriers that, uh, that are out there and uh, what day-to-day -day wheelchair users or uh, prosthetic users or any other mobility aid users kind of encounter in the community. Uh, we've simulated those architectural barriers here. To cross a surface which is challenging, there are four different methods. This is rolling straight on the surface and the next method will be even more easier which is called popping casters. So front wheels will be lifted at smaller intervals so that it doesn't get stuck. 
and the next method is continuous wheelie the front wheels will be lifted continuously it requires more skill and this will be a bit challenging but the fastest method to overcome this surface and then rolling backward is less challenging but it will be very time consuming and more energy consuming this is the place where we want to showcase you know try a do a true diversity and inclusion can actually happen and it's much more fulfilling when it happens the wheelchair skills program is completely free uh, we provide uh, the training along with accommodation and food as well uh, so that's that's how we you know initially wanted to we run about 5 6 programs now uh, and we've had about uh, 60 to 70 uh, users come and benefit out of it and it's been completely uh, free uh, what we've noticed is the first two three programs you know people not uh, have not had the educational background or coming from rural areas but in the last two three uh, training batches we've seen medical doctors come in phd people who've done masters in hospital management so we are starting to see that change that's really happening uh, which i think is great for the society as well we take about 10 to 15 people uh, because we didn't want to overload uh, because apart from the training we also do community program we take them out into the community hailing a cab or taking a metro going to the beach or to a movie we want them to experience that and having larger batches would you know kind of uh, pose a challenge so we've been doing this in small batches this runs for 2 to 3 weeks depending on uh, whether it's an intermediate skill or beginning skills or advanced skills in the journey from you know um, say hospitalization after an injury to being able to use assistive devices there's an important component that is usually missing and that is rehabilitation and that's partially because you know uh, access uh, to rehabilitation is uh, uh, very poor and the number of therapists that are available to administer rehab uh, versus uh, the number of uh, people who need it that ratio is very poor it's something like 1 is to 25000 one therapist for every 25000 people who need rehabilitation so technology can help uh, fill that gap and so we have been working with uh, a cmc velour uh, to develop devices uh, and our new startup thrive uh, rehab uh, will be commercializing uh, the these uh, set of devices we are working on devices for say hand neuro rehabilitation after stroke so and, and our idea is we want to take rehabilitation to the bedside you know you, you start from the bedside and you should be able to also take it home because only when there is that intensity uh, that is achieved uh, um, you you will see that uh, progress and you will see that func- function returning uh, to the uh, uh, user so pluto is a, a hand rehabilitation robot that we have developed a uh, very simple can be packed and taken even on a two wheeler by a therapist to rural areas and uh, or you, uh, there's a home version that people can use uh, at home it's been extensively tested it trains hand function so we have uh, some other rehab projects going on we have a prosthetic foot that we are uh, working on that we hope to uh, launch later i i think what we are able to do at r2d2 is apply scientific rigor to the development of these devices um so it's not just you know we we understand the problem usually it comes from a real need because there is extensive user input in the process right from the need definition to the usability of the product you know we hope that when we are actually ready to go to market with our partners it's a well tested uh, well researched product uh, that users will actually uh, adopt easily is there concern about the pricing and availability of assistive devices for people who may not be able to afford them we try to use appropriate technology and the grid model also helps keep things affordable because pretty much all the r&d costs are absorbed by uh, you know the grants that we get and the facilities that we have at iit madras so we just license the technology the companies pay a small licensing fee and that's one way we keep the co- uh, final price very affordable if uh, you know there are people who can't afford it they partner like for instance new motion partners with companies who give csr who provide these devices through csr people also realize that if with these devices if they can do more they can get themselves educated they can go for employment then they don't mind 
figuring out how to pay for these devices. There are also financing options uh, that are there. And policy makers also have to get out of this mindset that rehabilitation or you know assistive technologies is just about charity and therefore they have to look for the cheapest things to get the numbers. What is the point of a wheelchair yeah, that's donated for free that is uh, of no use to the person uh, it's donated to, right? Once that awareness sets in, I mean, we've had policymakers come through here and they see the difference some of these devices make in the lives of people, how people can start contributing to the economy, start paying taxes, you know? So you have to lo look beyond just the uh, cost of the device. And again, that's a mindset change. People are willing to spend uh, thousands on smartphones, right? If they know that there is a benefit to it, you're going to go for the best smartphone that you can afford. And it also has to be policy change in terms of insurance and you know uh, what devices are covered, how they should be covered. So the government has to think about uh, these things at a policy level. And I think Niti Aayog, they're, all, they're starting to do these things. I think now we have helped bring the spotlight onto assistive technologies with some of these innovations uh, and uh, the impact that we are able to uh, showcase with them. We are able to put the spotlight on assistive technologies and that's why they are more than willing to engage and try to figure out solutions to some of these uh, uh, problems. Now we are looking at the next generation of devices, you know, smarter devices, uh, um, uh, etc. And we have another startup called Thrive Mobility that uh, Justin will be uh, spearheading, uh, which will work on some of these uh, uh, newer devices. And I'll let Justin uh, describe those in some more detail. Uh, so we're playing around with a lot of uh, mechatronic and electronic solutions, a uh, little bit of robotic solutions, wearable devices, how they integrate with the traditional wheelchair and how can you make them smarter. So those are things that uh, we are uh, working on. Yeah, uh, I think the last uh, decade was all about laying the foundation and uh, you know uh, filling the gaps wherever we didn't have the appropriate technologies. I think the next decade is going to be uh, doing a catch up a little bit and then you know going beyond that and showing the world that India is capable of putting out these devices, real good technologies. And the most important thing is we should be able to take these devices to the global uh, markets. I think that's when you get the volumes and uh, you know this uh, entire thing of assistive technology, volumes low, uh, not being able to uh, break even, that narrative will start uh, changing. And overall, you know, not just Thrive or Neo Motion. if you look at the entire ecosystem that we've created, uh, right from R2D to MCAT and these startups, uh, one unique thing is this has all the stakeholders coming in together, be it researchers, academicians, uh, engineers, di different disciplines of engineers, clinical professionals, be it occupational therapists, physiotherapists, social workers, and peers themselves, users themselves. So that's how we've been able to crack uh, the customization problem and the user-centric uh, design uh, challenge. And that's the reason why uh, often we see a lot of users of our devices absolutely loving them. 